I believe that music is a means of enculturation. Music has a power, an innate capability of bringing people together, regardless of race, ethnicity, sexuality, gender, or class. Music is in our blood. It courses through our veins, pushing against the skin, begging to be heard, to be shared. I believe that the value of music education can be beneficial to anyone, whether it's the simple joy from listening to the radio on your commute to work, or a deeper passion that comes with being a performer or a teacher. Music is a rare field that offers something for everybody. I believe that people share a passion for music because it is somewhat non-conceptual. Anyone can do it. I believe that being in a classroom filled with passion and interests promotes a better work ethic, respect, and furthered intellectualism and scholarship. I believe that as a music educator, you hold a different relationship with students than a general educator. Students form unique bonds with their music educators. As a music educator and role model, it is important to form this bond with your students. Know what is going on in their lives, what sports teams they are on, what plays they are in, what colleges they applied for. Knowing these things and showing interest in students' lives sets up a basis for a kind and compassionate educator that isn't just there for a paycheck, but an educator that is there because this is what they love to do. I aspire to share the successes and fulfillment I have found in music with the world. I aspire to widen the path of joy and passion. My beliefs at this point in my professional development align mainly with the philosophy of progressivism, although I do see the benefits of essentialism and existentialism. As a progressivist, I believe that music can be used to educate the whole being, not just the mind. Swiss educational reformer Johann Pastolozzi had a similar concept, which is known as the three H's, head, hand, and heart or a whole child approach to teaching. Another important aspect of progressivism is the importance of a student's involvement. Rather than students being passive learners, they are encouraged to initiate their own experiments and experience the results, or learn by doing. The concept of learning by doing and active experimentation is especially important in a music education. Simply being told how to play an instrument, how to sing, or how to compose has no benefit if the student can't experiment. There's a saying in the music world, if you're going to mess up, you might as well mess up loud. The point of doing in a classroom is to experiment and learn from the outcomes. As an essentialist, I see the value of a strict and conservative standard. However, I believe that because of the pressures and commitments that the students are already faced with, the music community should be presented as a safe space, void of stress and negativity. Musical experiences are necessary for all people if their essential humanness is to be realized. Bennett Raymer and David Elliott are two of the most leading minds in the field of music education. Raymer and Elliot have very similar views on why music should be taught. They believe that music is a form of cognition unique to itself, and that through music, one can access further mental capacity. Raymer's aesthetic approach centers around the idea of learning and understanding through listening and analysis. Elliot's praxial approach focuses on learning through doing. My beliefs at this point in my professional development coincide with both Raymer and Elliot. As stated before, as a progressivist, I see the benefit and importance of learning by doing, and as an essentialist, I value critical analysis. I, along with Raymer and Elliot, believe that music develops a form of intelligence that affords meaningful cognitive experiences unavailable in any other way. Philosophers Johann Pestalozzi and Jerome Brunner have similar views to Elliot and Raymer. 
As mentioned before, Pestalozzi advocated a whole-child approach to education, meaning that it is important to educate the whole being, not just the mind. Pestalozzi stressed the importance of an education that reaches three areas of one's being, head, hand, and heart. Music is a unique subject in that it does exactly that. In a theory class, you educate your head. In choir, band, or orchestra, you educate your hand. But what is truly powerful is the ability to educate your heart. Music is nothing without heart. Bruner is similar to Eliot and Raymer in that he believes in having structured content, but is aware of the necessity of progressivism or learning by doing. Bruner's three stages of intellectual development, inactive, iconic, and symbolic, exemplify his belief in structured experimentation. Legislation acts and reforms, such as the Every Student Succeeds Act, make the goal of getting a well-rounded music education within reach. The Every Student Succeeds Act recognizes music and arts as an important factor in a well-rounded education. And while they don't require arts or music as a core subject, it is recommended that it be treated lightly. Reformity and growth are necessary in the field of education. There will always be new ways of learning, of teaching, of understanding, and it is vital that the educators stay up to date on the newest strategies and methods. Every day I am growing, as a person, as a musician, and as an educator. Growing up with parents who are educators, I have learned that being a teacher means constantly evolving. It is a misconception that teachers are foremostly masters of their fields. I would have to negate that idea by saying that teachers may have mastered aspects of their practice, but there are always new ideas, methods, or systems to be learned. Involvement in organizations like NAFME or OMEA and others help one to stay up to date and evolve as an educator. I plan on attending conferences at the regional, state, and eventually national and international level to assure that I remain the most informed I can be, and thusly, the best educator I can be. Music is a language unchanged by time. Our appreciation for visuals can fade away depending on the fads of a generation. Art is not always appreciated. Plays are not always appreciated. Books are not always appreciated. And though it pains me to say those things, there is an undoubted truth to them. Music, however, is something unjaded by time. For centuries, music has brought together cultures, religions, and scholars. No matter the age, the ethnicity, the religion, or the political standing, music remains appreciated. I believe that music is a means of enculturation because music is what we do.